So just a few considerations this morning. Today the feast of St. James the Greater, St. James the, uh, the More, the, uh, the Apostle. And good to be here again in, in uh, Melbourne. So I'm going to follow you some of those two men. So St. James, one of the beloved apostles, one of the sacred apostles, the three sacred apostles. And here you know that uh, St. John, St. Peter, Peter, James, and John. And our Lord had 12 apostles, 72 disciples, holy women, saints. And there are many, many saints in the kingdom of heaven. And each one is a different flower in the garden of heaven. And one of the modern ideas is that everyone is identical to another. It's very deep in our blood, it's one of the great heresies and errors of our times, the false idea of equality. And each one is identical to another. One of the problems of everyone being identical to another is that then no one has any individuality, no one has any special gifts, no one has any beauty. Everyone is just like a like a ball bearing on a on a wheel or like a part in a machine. And this is called equality by the devil. In fact, it's wicked. In fact, it's evil. In fact, it makes everyone into just a machine and irrelevant because one part can easily be replaced by another. But the way God designed things is that no part can be replaced by any other part. If you even look inside of our own body, each, each blood vessel, every movement, every, every muscle, every single part of our body is different from every other part, and each is beautiful, each is magnificent, each works in perfect harmony with the other, and they are not equal. They are not the same. And this is the way that God made things, so that everything can be loved with a special love, and everything can have a special purpose, but all are not the same. The head is not the same as the toenail, and it will never be. And either, but each is loved perfectly by God, each is important for the body, but they are not of equal importance. So God decided there should be 12 apostles. One of them he made the head, not the other 11. He decided there should be 12 apostles. One of them he made his most beloved apostle, and not the others. And he decided there should be 12 apostles, and one he made special would be the first one to die for him, and would be close to him like unto Peter and John. And that is James, the one in the Gospel, the one in the Mass that we consider today. And he would also be the first apostle to see Mary in a miraculous way. In fact, we know the Blessed Virgin Mary, we know of no miracles that she performed in her life on this earth. But there's one, one for sure, and that is her miraculous apparition to St. John, St. James in Saragossa in Spain. And James, the beloved apostle, near also the, the saints tell us, he was set aside from the other apostles in three different situations, which we won't consider here, we just mentioned them. First, he was set aside from the other apostles because he was in the house of Jairus, the daughter of Jairus. It must have been a small house, and there wasn't room for all the twelve. And therefore our Lord left the people outside, he left the apostles outside, and he went inside to raise her from the dead with Peter, James, and John only. And so they were with him alone in the house, in a room. Another time Christ took Peter, James, and John to the top of the Mount of Transfiguration. He left the other nine at the bottom. And here the saints tell us it clearly wasn't a matter of space. It wasn't because there wasn't enough room in that little bitty house nor because there wasn't enough room on top of the mountain, is because he had sacred things to show to Peter, James, and John that he didn't even show to the other apostles. And so they saw him transfigured in glory. They saw him speak to Elias. They saw him speak to Enoch. And they saw him speak to rather Moses and Elias. And he even told them, don't tell anyone, not even the other nine apostles, until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. And hence there are sacred words that Christ speaks to one saint, he doesn't speak to another. There's a sacred role for one saint that is not that for another. And this is part of what will make the communion of the saints so wonderful in the kingdom of heaven, that when we're in the kingdom of heaven, we'll be able to talk to all the saints. And we'll be, each saint will be able to explain his part in the kingdom of heaven. The head, for instance, rules very well, but it's very far from the toenail. It doesn't understand the great value of the toenail. And in the kingdom of heaven... 
But look at the saints that belong to the toenail and say, you know what, when you were walking, I, you were going to stub your toe when I was there. And so each of, the, each of the saints will have a part to play. Not all can be the roses. Some must be grass. You can't sit upon the roses. You get to, it's very painful. And so we, might, well, we can sit upon the grass. And God's kingdom is most beautiful because there are so many different varieties of saints. So many different varieties of works. So many different varieties of souls inside of that kingdom. And then, of course, the most sacred time that Christ took Peter, James, and John with himself was when he went to the garden of Gethsemane to weep. He left the others to sleep. And he asked Peter, James, and John, could you not watch one hour with me? And so James was one of the ones asked to watch one hour with Christ. He slept. He was one of the ones that saw Moses and Elias. And he was there inside of that house watching the miracle of the raising of the daughter of Lazarus, of, 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 of Jairus. And so he was special and sacred. And there the saints tell us these are the three first apostles. The first in authority, St. Peter. The first in love, St. John. And then the first in death, St. James. And James would be the first one to shed his blood for Christ. And also in our Lord in the Gospel today, James and John, they are very ambitious. And they are the sons of thunder. And they have a similar heart, James and John. James, the older brother, John, the younger brother. And they were, they were very angry. They were not received in Samaria at a certain city. And therefore they called to Jesus Christ and said, Lord, if thou wilt, send fire from heaven and destroy that city. And hence the other apostles called them the sons of thunder. And our Lord Jesus Christ himself called them the sons of thunder. And then also St. Basil says that James, when he would speak in his wrath, when James would speak against the enemies of God, he would thunder. And if he were to lift his voice a little higher, all hell would flee from him, and he could comprise the whole world with the power of his voice. So he was a son of thunder. And James, James went to Spain after the, after the resurrection and the ascension. And when he went to Spain, he preached to the Spanish. And unlike the other apostles, they didn't listen to him. They didn't listen. And no one converted. Some say, it says Jacobus of Rajin, only one man converted. But I actually believe that possibly seven converted. Seven men converted. He went all the way through Spain and they did not listen to him. And he converted only seven men. And they came back with him. And he remembered the words of our Lord. If they will not hear you, go out from that city and wipe the dust off your feet. And he became angry with a holy anger. And he went with his seven men out of Spain. And as he was passing through Saragossa, on his way out of Spain, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to him in the very first apparition of Our Lady before she had assumed into, was assumed into heaven. While she was still on this earth, she appeared to him on a pillar, on a little a, a marble, a pink marble pillar. She stood, she stands only a few feet out of the ground, very small at the top. She stood on top of the pillar and she said, James, go back. The people will convert. Now Spain will convert. And so he continued on his way. And he heard that, that Our Lady said that the Spanish will convert, and so they did. And he said, well, they will keep the faith until the end of the world. And so her prophecy has been maintained. So then he went to, back to Jerusalem. And there the seven, he had the seven uh, men that he converted, consecrated bishops by St. Peter rather than by himself. And then it was commanded by St. Peter that those seven should go back to Spain. So James himself didn't even go back to convert the Spanish. He didn't need to go back because he heard Our Lady. He heard Mary say, they will convert. He heard Mary say, they will return. Therefore, he saw no need to return to Spain. The seven could go back in his stead. These seven men that were Spanish, the seven men that he had ordained, had ordained uh, bishops by St. 